Good morning, everyone. This is Salesforce Lori, and um, today is a Sunday, and I have been working on my version 2.0 of my portfolio, which should look like this. Um, so this is just a skeleton. I don't have contents yet, and the first thing that I'm trying to do is go to the guest book and put a screen flow there. This is what it should look like, but um, it looks like this because I am logged in. So if we will try to open a new private window and paste, oops, that's not the one. <laughs> um, let me copy that. Copy incognito window and we will paste that. Pardon my voice because I have the cold and basically laryngitis. So every now and then I will be like, <clears throat> so, so yeah, in an incognito window, you don't see the screen flow. Okay. And so that's what we're trying to figure out. And I've done this quite a few times, maybe two times in the past, and it's still not easy to remember the steps to do, um, especially now with the spring, there are new changes with the spring release. Um, so if you remember, uh, it used to be that if you go to a user profile, you would see run flows, you know, something like if you go to here, it used to be that you could find run flows permission. But let me so this is like um, the unenhanced look of the profile. And it's kind of hard to navigate, um, but it's, it's still doable. It has its uses. So, um, <clears throat> but there is such a thing as user management settings. So you can enhance the profile user interface. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, let's not yet. Um, just so you know, in order to make, um, to have access to allow guest ac uh, allow guest users access to screen flows, there's actually a trailhead for that, okay? So these are the things. Um, so for one thing, you have to make sure that your flow is active, but you also will have to, so I have activated this, and this is the typical flow for creating new contact. There's a trailhead module for that. Um, look up, build a simple flow, you'll get the gist of it. Um, but I only needed the name and email address and then the other um, custom fields that I added. But I want you to pay attention to this. When you save your, your flow, um, so I named this new contact, right? You have to show advanced and make sure that you check this access all data so that even in an external site like experience site where the guest user will be a non Salesforce user and won't have to log in to be able to use the flow, you'll have to enable that part, okay? But it's not only that. You also will have to make sure that on the sharing set, so this, when you get on the sharing set, it gives you the org wide default. Um, you pay attention to the default external access. And since I am making a contact, I mean, the, the guest user is going to create a contact. So they must be given read write access, right? So I, I did that here. And they also should have at least the site user visibility. So that's another. Now, um, the run flows permission 
it used to be that it's available in um, in the profile now how do you get to the profile of your guest user so if you are on the builder and I don't know if you know how to get there but if you click all sites and you get to the digital experiences um, presuming you have enabled digital experiences and you have created this new domain new website to get to the builder you click on this and it will bring you to this interface where you can it's almost like um, building a, a blog a website right but um, there are places here that later on you'll have to learn how to navigate and I'm still learning but one thing that you have to make sure is you go to the settings make sure that you allow guest users public access to you know the guest users is the public access so you have to click this checkbox so that the guest users can actually see the site um, and also um, if you go to the administration you also need to make sure that the site is activated okay and for the preferences you give guest users access I, I just clicked whatever whatever has to do with the guest user and what what I think they might you know might have I just click 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 I'm not an expert <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to guess which ones will work. Um, aside from this, uh, from what I gather, the guest users from that site will qualify as a customer community user. So if you can't find that, um, I, you can also try to like click all. Um, I'm not sure if anything else will appear. But yeah, um, customer community user definitely add that. <clears throat> but sometimes I just guess, guess, guess. So sometimes I might add some more people there because you won't really see the profile of um, the guest user in this page. That is, um, what else? I'm not requiring login, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, so we will go back to the builder. <clears throat> so once you've taken care of that settings, what you want to do now is go to the profile. So this is the guest user profile. Since I named my site Lori's Portfolio, so the portfolio, the profile that corresponds to that will be the guest. Uh, Lori's portfolio profile. So this is it. Not it and it looks like this and if you've been doing if you're new to um, Doing the admin trail mix. This is probably what you start with but I don't like that look because in um, Well, I, I'm just gonna emphasize this I grant permission to the contacts to create okay now um, you can there is such a thing as the run flows permission and I believe this is something new because when I was going to the profile of the guest user I was having a hard time finding the run flows permission if you go to your own system admin you can you can find that but um, for the for this particular guest user profile it's not easy so there are ways to to get to that but first I would like to make sure that under user management setting you will have enabled the prof the enhanced profile interface so let's go back to my loris prof portfolio profile and refresh the button <clears throat> refresh the page so now it looks like this right so this is the enhanced um, enhanced user interface 
And what I would like to, like I said, I want the flow to be visible. So the object setting is will, of course, uh, make sure that I have access to the contact. And I mean, this profile, the guest user profile has access to the contact, which is read and create, right? So, and then you go to the other things here and you will notice that there is a flow access. So this is, it's not easy to find that but before before you go to that, I would like you to go to um, the list of flows. So in the list of flows, so this is a new contact flow, right? That's the one that I am creating. You go to edit access and you have to check this button. Initially, this was not checked. So I checked that and I essentially just selected all profiles that I could find because you won't find Lorig's portfolio profile there. Supposedly, it's the customer community user that's um, the equivalent profile for the experience site profiles, right? Um, but just so you know, not all experience sites because you can have more than one experience site and you can have several flows and you might not even use um, the same flow for for all of the sites you might assign only a, a particular uh, flow to a particular site in any case so okay so we have over we have done the override we so that's part of the access that you will have to grant. Um, and of course, the flow is supposed to be activated already. Okay, now how do you find the run flows permission? Um, <clears throat> so that was the override default that we just I just showed you, right? Override default, something, something. Override default behavior, restrict access to enabled profiles, permission set. So as you can see, um, that was accessing that um, permission via the flow itself. Now, how do you allow the, per the profile to run the flows? So when you're on this profile, what you need to do, um, is that the same? Anyway. Okay. So um, let's, okay. So now you go to the flow axis and what you need to do is edit that to add. So this is the flow. So you're allowing this profile to have access to that. And once you have added it to the enabled flows for that particular guest user profile, then he should be able to see and use that flow. However, there's another step that I don't think they addressed here because um, and this is for within within the org like internal use of the screen flow that they created so my screen flow is on an experience site right so let us open again the incognito window and just check whether, let's refresh that. So you can see now this, right? So now it's there. Um, but I wanted it to be, I want this experience site to be the default 
the default site for this particular guest user. So another thing that I would add is this default experience. And I will edit that to make sure that that Loris portfolio, as you remember, that's my site title. So that is the default experience site for this guest user. Not sure that it would affect my incognito browser, but um, where did that go? So um, let us try that again in an incognito browser and see. what happens all right so it's there for now now i don't know if this will actually work to create a contact yet um i haven't debugged i well if it's a screen flow on a on an experience site apparently you can use the debug but i tried to to run the flow and I was having some unhandled error. So I got to try to see first whether I have configured everything. But for now, I'll stop here. And this is only to allow access to guest users of the screen flow that is on an experience site without the guest user having to log in. Okay, I hope you all learned about something today this is a continuous repeated process for me and uh, i can't seem to convince myself to study for the experience site if i can't even remember the steps here so but i hope i hope you enjoyed this video happy learning <laughs>